there's a cap on the amount that you could be told. The cap on the amount that you could be told and the location of the gantries are two totally separate, independent, mutually exclusive things. Uh, what this amendment addresses is if you live in a part of the state that the DOT presently does not want to toll. So, yes, there is a cap if you are subject to the toll. If right now you're getting out scot-free, DOT may make a determination that you should be paying a toll. And now they can expand the gantry system to get as many people everywhere. Maybe the average amount that people are going to be paid is far less than 20. It's, they have every incentive in the world to have as many people in as big of a universe as possible paying that toll. That's what this amendment addresses. To Deputy Speaker Lima's uh, uh, point, um, and, and I, I consider a great friend and you're a very talented legislator, I don't know what anything you said has to do with this amendment. My amendment does not address diversion. It does not increase diversion. Whatever diversion they may be, and I certainly have issues with the level of diversion there may be, I'm going to address that on the bill itself, or to the extent there's a, a germane amendment on that point. This amendment simply says it freezes in time what DOT has already told us. To the extent that there's diversion as a result of what DOT is putting out there, that, quite frankly, is their problem. That is something that is inherited by this bill if it passes. If we cap the number, that doesn't mean more cars are driving outside of your house. That's, it's not going to happen. And, and finally, to, to Chairman Gallison's point, that, uh, yes, we absolutely have to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Federal Highway Administration. But let's make ourselves abundantly clear. While I was looking through this legislation, I talked to the Federal Highway Administration, and they seemed like very nice people. They also seemed tremendously confused as to what the state's trying to do. Maybe it was because I was talking to a lawyer who happens to work for the federal government, who's a federal government bureaucrat lawyer. He's probably the worst type you can talk to. I couldn't really get a lot of straight answers. But the guidance they gave me is abundantly clear. The Federal Highway Administration has no restrictions on a tolling program put into place under this exemption on a road that's in the national highway system. First of all, they have no jurisdiction if it's not in the national highway system. And DOT could put a toll on that tomorrow if they wanted to. There is no prohibition in the law that I'm aware of that says we can't do that, with the exception of the Sakonet River Bridge, because we specifically put that exemption in there. Barring that, if there's a state highway, we're free to toll it, right? But on a road in the national highway system, not only do the feds say we can do it, this bill says DOT can do it. Any bridge on the national highway system can be tolled. The director told us 250 bridges meet this requirement, that they be structurally deficient, that we could put a toll on. My read of the federal rules is that they don't even require a certification that they be structurally deficient to get a toll. We just have to put some money into them after we put a toll on them. But at the very least, we could have up to 250 gantries under this plan. Yes, DOT is talking about 14 today. It was 17 two weeks ago. What's it going to be tomorrow when we give them the authority to do whatever they want? We're giving them complete discretion. And we're abdicating our responsibility as legislators who are representing our communities. When we talk to our constituents and say this does not negatively affect us directly in name your town here because the governor's put out a map that has the tolls elsewhere, that is not true. That map is just a map. They put it together. This bill does nothing to keep tolls on, to quote Representative Trill, maybe not on the road outside your house, but maybe on the highway near where you live. If they want the money, if they feel they need the money, they will get the money. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Deputy Speaker Lima. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. First of all, we were asked where in the bill, page 9, line 11, the director of the department may designate any Rhode Island bridge on the National Highway System as a toll bridge in order to facilitate the financing, replacement, construction, or maintenance of Rhode Island bridges. So therefore, Representative Trill, unless you live under a bridge on a federal highway, these, you, you told people this is going in front of people's houses. You know, you laugh, but you know, you know what frustrates me here today with this debate? The misinformation, the political rhetoric that's being thrown out here. Representative Morgan, I never said we got to be throwing up gantries everywhere. I happen to read the bill and know they have to go on a bridge on the national highway system. So please look at the facts. 
And I was right. It is in conference with the federal uh, highway organization. So they, you've been throwing a lot of baloney and rhetoric about this bill, and that's the problem with this bill. It's a good bill, but the rhetoric is trying to cloud up all the facts that we have. It does apply to diversion. You know why it applies to diversion? Because if we have to put, if one of those gantries have to be put up on the highway to prevent that, it applies. If we limit it with this amendment, we could mess the whole thing up. I don't even think we're going to need 14 gantries. And think about this. We're limited. You drive to our state, it is relevant. $20 to drive to our state. If you have 14 gantries, do the math. What are we going to have a toll for, $1.42? You're hearing, oh, we're going to put up hundreds of gantries. Do the math. What are we going to be charging, negative numbers? It doesn't make sense. Nobody's going to be reckless and do these ridiculous things. What we're trying to do is fix our roads and bridges because the infrastructure is the most important component we need to bring jobs and economy. I don't want to go after our constituents, our taxpayers, and raise their taxes to do it. I want where most of the money's coming from out of state truckers. So please do not support this amendment and look at the facts. Keep asking questions. We have a brilliant group here. And just don't fall for the rhetoric. rhetoric. Thank you. Representative Morgan. Thank you, Speaker. Just want to point out that it's not a dollar forty-two that we're planning on, on charging. It's forty-five million. Lady De Savone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. Uh, just to sum up a couple of uh, overriding principles I think that are important in terms of uh, voting on this amendment. First is flexibility. You know, we, we want, we're doing this project, we have to do it right. So what ends up happening is DOT enters into a partnership with the Federal Highway Association. They come up with a memorandum of understanding. And that's for the location of the toll. So we have to have some flexibility. What this bill does, and Deputy Speaker uh, Charlene Lima referenced it, but on page 9, uh, line 11 to 13, clearly states the limitation. It has to be on the national highway system. So you can't have it anywhere but on that system. Secondly, you go down a couple of paragraphs, and it talks about the price. So we limit it monetarily. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's be reasonable in our debates. We limited it monetarily. We gave them flexibility. They're going to have to have a memory of, of understanding with the Federal Highway uh, Association Authority. And, and the result will be the toll project. So I would urge you to vote against this amendment. It takes that flexibility, which in turn creates efficiency. We're giving them the flexibility so that we have efficiency. So I would urge you to vote against this amendment. Thank you. There are no, uh, no other lights on the amendment. Clerk, please unlock the machine. All those in favor, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Clerk, lock the machine. 16 in favor, 57 opposed. The amendment fails. I believe we're ready to go back to Representative Marshall's amendment. So, Representative Marshall, if we could go back to LC004326-36. Moved by Representative Marshall. I already had a second. My seconds were Representative Yuchi, Representative Marcello, Chairman Shikachi. On the amendment, Representative Marcello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. During the break, we did have an opportunity to meet with the DOT staff council in the, uh, in, the, in the lounge. We did go over the language. I do want to compliment uh, Representative Nunes and Representative Marshall. Um, this does tighten the language. Um, it, it is an appropriate section of the law, uh, and I do believe that it, it, it limits the, the trucks that can be told under this proposal. Again, we're trying to make a, what I consider a bad proposal better, and I'm, I'm glad to lead in that effort, but I want to thank Representative Nunes and Re Representative Marshall for making this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you for the time for getting that straightened out. Representative Chippendale. Thank you, Speaker. 
I too had uh, three amendments addressing this issue. One of them I, I will still be submitting. And the reason why is, while this certainly does seem to address some of the concerns, my concerns with the amendment are that we're relying on a federal, reg uh, federal definition which can change without our input or, or any, any interaction whatsoever. So we're tying ourselves to that definition. But more importantly, what one of the amendments that I uh, have in the queue Repres would do... Representative, we're on this well, amendment. You I'm can... speaking about this amendment. I'm speaking about what this amendment doesn't do. Is that, is that appropriate? Uh, okay. So what this amendment does not do is does not clearly define the trucks and, more importantly, it does not prohibit that from changing. In other words, while right now we're legislating, this is the, this is the limitations of the vehicles. We can, as we've just seen in three days, legislate anything we want. We can unlegislate that next week. We can unlegislate it next year. Or the next body, when all of us are dead and buried, can unlegislate it. An amendment I'm prepared to offer would make sure that a referendum to the people would must be heard before it can be imposed on any other vehicle. So I applaud as well the efforts and the awareness and sensitivity to our constituents' needs by addressing this by the sponsor, because it is an issue. But I don't think it goes just far enough, because again, it can be legislated away just as quickly as it was legislated. Let's leave that up to the people. Let's change that a little bit put that power into the hands of the people. I still plan to offer that amendment regardless of the outcome of this, uh, this vote. And my, um, my no vote on this amendment is not a reflection of the intent. It's a reflection that I believe it doesn't go far enough, but I do have an amendment that will. Thank you. Well, Representative, when you introduce your amendment, you can repeat what you just said. Thank you. Representative Riley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House. Um, I. I understand what's going on here, and I'm not against it, but I'm a little confused as to the approach we're taking. As I understand it, there are a few amendments that potentially will be in play that are trying to go at the same problem. I don't know of any, and I can only speak to one, but I, but I don't know of any that would describe it as is being done. One of my concerns is that the way the amendment reads, first of all, uh, the commercial vehicles that are going to be told is mentioned in more than one spot in the bill. Uh, so we're only making this change in one spot. I think at the very least it makes it confusing. But I think more to the point, in the language regarding the referendum, we talk about passenger cars. Uh, here, I think there is an, it's clear that our intent is that there are a lot of vehicles, not just including the term passenger cars, that now we are trying to put a definition onto that we don't wish to be told. I don't know why we haven't made this change in that section as well, or is our intent that we feel that a referendum would not be needed to toll a pickup truck you know, owned by a landscaping company or a pickup truck owned by anyone that's pulling a trailer? I, again, I think the amendment's good. I'm not going to vote against it. But I don't understand why we worded it this way. Also, referencing the Code of Fed reg Federal Regulations, uh, that the CFR can change. We're, we're not, I mean, I, I understand as a point of reference, I don't think it's a very good one. And so um, I'm going to vote for this amendment. I would not be surprised if there are a lot of holes. I am very concerned about the lack of a referendum question being applied to these types of vehicles since now we're expressing our wish that they not be told. I think we should only be consistent. And I think there are other amendments later on that hopefully will address that. But there are serious problems with this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Nunes. Thank you, Speaker. I, uh, I think that this, af after reviewing the, uh, this amendment, I think that it does address the issues uh, that were present in the original bill. So I do thank you for your uh, tolerance in that respect. Um, the, it, I just want to make it clear to the members of the chamber that if, if you don't support this, the, the way the bill is currently drafted, we will be tolling uh, Anybody with a, a dual rear wheel pickup truck who's towing a camper, whether it's recreational use or towing a boat, if, if, if they have a class five uh, truck with a trailer on it, 
that is classified as eight. So this does solve, this does close that loophole, and I would urge, uh, urge support of this because if not, uh, we, we would be passing something that everybody, some, we would be passing something that's different than what everybody has been saying it is. So by, by restricting it to the, the, the definition in this amendment, it, it, it brings a little bit of, uh, it brings a lot of clarity to what is told and what is not told. And it, it meshes a lot better with what everybody has been saying will be told. So this, this would be the honest thing to do. Not, I'm not saying I'm going to support the tolling plan. I'm just saying that this is the honest way to go about it. Thank you. Representative Giarusso. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a quick question for the sponsor, if he will yield. The, will the sponsor yield? He will yield. Proceed. Rep. Marshall, what uh, technology do we have in place that will differentiate what type of vehicle is going through the gantry? Well, I will tell you that, uh, Representative, I am not an easy pass expert, but we have been assured that through staff as well as the Department of Transportation staff that the mechanisms have the ability to determine one classification versus another. So do they read license plates? Do they count axles, tires? You, no idea? Nope. I believe it's inside the coding of the easy pass module that's inside the vehicle itself. What if you don't have an easy pass? Well, that's a good question. I think that that would be uh, a better question to be given to the staff. It's a question on the bill. It's a question on the bill. I believe the chairman may be able to assist you. Would you like the chairman to yield? Yes, please. All right. Thank you, Speaker. Chairman Gallison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Representative G. Russo, the technology that these gantries have right now is very far advanced, and it's, it, it's there. It can uh, distinguish and differentiate, if you will. Uh, it will be able to, to pick up between this type of vehicle that is being excluded and just put the toll on the other vehicle, that 18, uh, excuse me, class 8 or larger. So that these vehicles can be excluded by the technology that, from the, um, uh, by the, that are on the gantries right now. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Lead. Mm -hmm. Representative Morgan. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know which one. I guess, uh, uh, Chairman Gallison, you're the one who's more able to answer this. When the director was here, he said that if just the cab without the trailer was traveling, they wouldn't be told. Is that the same? You are correct. That's right. If the cab by itself is a class six. Okay, okay, so now they we're talking about we're talking about uh, a class eight vehicle going through the gantry. If the cab alone goes through, that's a class six, so that doesn't get told. Okay, thank you. Lita De Simone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, members of the House. Uh, I want to compliment Representative Marshall on putting forth this amendment and uh, all the uh, people who uh, tried their best to define what's covered through the gantries. What this does is it limits it and it uses the federal statute to do so. And quite frankly, I, I think to uh, make a suggestion that somehow, some way, they're going to change the definition uh, in that statute. Uh, that's been around for some time. Uh, they delineate the different classifications of vehicles. Uh, they're very proficient at it. And by all experts that we've consulted with, including the director of DOT, this is the most specific way to limit the size of the vehicle so that we would protect uh, landscapers and people of that nature. So I would urge my colleagues uh, to support this amendment. Thank you. There are no lights. Clerk, unlock the machine. All those in favor of the amendment, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Clerk, lock the machine. 73 in favor, zero opposed. The amendment prevails. Representative McEntee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, at the appropriate time, I have an amendment. 
It's the appropriate time. Proceed, please. Thank you. Uh, I move Amendment LC 004326-28. Representative McEntee moves Amendment LC 004326-28. That is seconded by Representative Almeida, Representative Marshall, Representative Ruggiero, Representative Carson, Representative Colangelo, Chairman Shikachi, Deputy Speaker Lima, Representative Blaise Juski, and Representative O'Brien. Proceed. And I'm sorry, Representative Abney also. Proceed, Representative. Mr. Speaker, this, uh, on page 12 of the bill, um, it's the uh, minority business enterprise. It addresses that issue. Excuse me as I pull up the page. I'm getting it. 12. Uh, pay, whoops, see, it's moving again. It's uh, page 12, line 5, equality of opportunity. I would just ask um, in, that the existing law, uh, pursuant to Rhode Island General Laws 37-14.1-1 and 37-14.1-3, uh, includes women as a minority business enterprise. And I would be asked, I would ask to be absolutely clear and to have no ambiguity in this bill that women are part of this bill and that would receive the same benefits as any minority, uh, the 10% um, of the dollar value of the bid. So I think this is a good addition to this bill. It makes it very clear that women are included as minorities, and I would uh, ask that, that you all pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative Almeida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. Women and minorities are, in fact, part of the 10% set aside. Mr. Speaker, thank you for working with me and, and contractors of color, black, Latino, but this this uh, amendment, as I read it, does give an enforcement, for that's what's been needed with DOT. And I'm being nice. So the fact is, with that enforcement, it will be able to bring us back, especially with uh, uh, contractors of color, to go back and include all women of color, as, as well as in the general purpose of it. So we thank you, but we mostly thank you for the enforcement of, of this. Thank you, Representative. Representative Giarusso. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Because I love my mother, my wife, and my daughter so much, and the women of this body, I would like to be recorded as a second on that. You may so be Thank you. recorded. Representative Diaz. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this amendment. I think it's just making justice to women and minority in the state. So please vote for the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative McEntee. Just one more statement, Your Honor. Uh, it was, I almost called you Your Honor. I'm too used to being in the courtroom. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. But, uh, I've done the same thing countless <laughs> times. But I did meet the women in construction have been meeting with me throughout uh, the last several months, and they've been discussing this exact issue uh, in accordance with the statute that's already on the books. And when I met with them most recently, uh, they were very pleased to hear that we were making efforts in this direction. So I just wanted to let everybody know that they are on board with this bill, with this language in the legislation. Thank you. Representative Lombardi. I won't call you around it today, Mr. Speaker, but members of this body. Uh, uh, if, I, if I didn't get up, I would have been admonished by my uh, brother, uh, Joseph Almeida, so I had to get up. I can, only say th I can only say this, amen, 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 but it's too bad we even have to go through this exercise. This should be happening as a matter of course, MBE, WBE. We talk about this in government, I've been talking about this, and I've been in government 2,000 years, and we're still talking about it. But again, this should be done as a matter of course. So 
uh, I'm glad for this amendment. I, I, I commend my, uh, my colleague. And uh, let's do this as a matter of course. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Well said, Representative. There are no other lights. Clerk, unlock the machine. All in favor of this amendment, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Clerk, lock the machine. 72 in favor, zero opposed. The amendment prevails. All right. Um, since this is taking some considerable time to get through the entire bill and recognizing that it is now 20 past 6 and you've all been here for a while, I'm sure everybody's hungry, we have a simple dinner. We, we, we ordered some, uh, some pizzas. So we're going to take a little bit of a break and let's say a few minutes be before, we'll be at ease until a few minutes before 7. Thank you.